Today, I'm going to explain a dystopian science fiction action thriller film called What Happened to Monday. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. In 2043, the population of the Earth has multiplied many folds. There is a massive shortage of resources of all kinds. The world opts for genetically modified crops which get fast-tracked around the globe. But this leads to a staggering spike in multiple births across the world. The solution is now feeding the problem. No one knows what to do. Political activist and renowned conservation biologist Dr. Nicolette Kamen has prompted the Federation to institute a one-child-per-family policy. A bureau called Child Allocation Bureau CAB, is formed to enforce this policy. All citizens are required to wear a bureau-issued identity bracelet. This bracelet could be scanned in order to identify people at various checkpoints throughout cities. When scanned, the bracelet's present data that states if you have a sibling or not. If another sibling is present, police are informed and, upon arrival, take the child. These children are put into cryosleep and they will be woken up, when the crisis the world is going through is handled. They will awaken in a better world. That year, a woman named Karen Setman has septuplets, thanks to the genetically modified food. Karen dies. The twins' grandfather, Terence, doesn't announce the seven siblings to the authorities. He names them each by one day of the week. He decides that all seven of them will live in secrecy in a place that has hidden areas, which he builds. He trains them all to take on the identity of Karen Setman. Each of them gets one day of the week to go out and be Karen. Sunday will get to go outside on Sunday, Monday on Monday, Tuesday on Tuesday, and so on. They grow up sharing the identity of Karen. When each of them comes back home, they explain to the others how their day was. This step is important as it allows the next girl to go out and continue being Karen. They are all fitted with electronic bracelets that are hacked by Terrence so that they could all be identified as Karen Seven. These bracelets are also fitted with GPS so that their location could be known when they are out of the house. Terrence also makes a hiding place that they could use when someone comes to the apartment. One Saturday, Saturday is attending a ballet contest, but Thursday decides to sneak out and skate. So when Saturday comes back, Thursday is still missing. Terence is very worried, suddenly they hear a knock on the door and they all immediately hide in their hiding place except Saturday. Terence immediately takes a gun and carefully opens the door, it turns out that the person is Thursday who has returned, but tragically Thursday gets her index finger cut off because she fell off the skateboard. Since all of the girls need to look the same, Terence cuts the index fingers off all the other girls starting from Monday. 30 years later, when they are adults, their grandfather has died and they also have different characteristics and appearances. Monday is the firstborn, and she's the good girl, the golden child, the A-type personality, and she, of all the sisters, embrace the collective identity. Tuesday is the paranoid pothead, a little bit of a loose cannon. Wednesday is the athletic one, the fighter of the bunch. Thursday is the bad girl, she's the rebel, and she craves her own identity and autonomy. Friday is the smart one, the computer geek, and the sisters only have their life, their career, their success, because of Friday. Saturday gets to hang out on Saturday, be homeschooled, and never went to work probably a day in her life, so she's the wild child, she's the lucky one, she gets to party her face off. And Sunday is the caregiver, she goes to church on Sunday, and is supposed to be the believer of the bunch. As they have different appearances, the sisters use wigs and makeup to cover any identifying features. On one Monday, it's time for Monday to go out of the house, but she is too nervous because that day, Karen Sethman is going to give a presentation at the office to get a promotion. Monday prepares her disguise. On her way to the office, at a checkpoint, Monday runs into Adrian, a CAB agent. He is checking her identity and talks to her. Arriving at work, Monday meets Jerry in the elevator, who is who is also eyeing for the promotion. Jerry tells Karen that he knows her secret and blackmails her to get the promotion. At night, the sisters are waiting for Monday who hasn't returned home, they track the GPS location of Monday's bracelet, but strangely her whereabouts cannot be traced. The sisters freak out and assume something happened to Monday. Next day, Tuesday heads out to work and tries to act normal. Tuesday learns that Monday got the promotion and met Jerry at a bar. Before she can investigate further, CAB agents detain her and cut off her communications. In the CAB facility, Adrian sees Tuesday escorted to a cell, where she meets Nicolette Cayman, head of the CAB. Cayman reveals that she knows that Tuesday has many siblings, and she knows there are still five of her twins living in her apartment. Then a CAB agent named Joe, grabs Tuesday and points a knife at her. In the apartment, the five remaining sisters begins to panic. Not long after, CAB agents come and enter their apartment with Karen's eye, to bypass a retinal scanner. 
A fight ensues between the CAB agents and the sisters. The sisters manage to defeat the agents, but Sunday is shot and she dies. The remaining four sisters are crying over Sunday's death, and getting more depressed. At the apartment, Friday learns that the eye is Tuesdays, and the sisters suspect Jerry may have sold them out. The next day, Wednesday leaves without disguising herself and confronts Jerry. However, it turns out that Jerry doesn't know anything about Karen's identity as one of seven people. All he knows is that Karen has a contract with Nicolette Cayman. He reveals that Karen got the promotion when she sent millions of euros to Cayman to fund her campaign. He doesn't know any other detail. Not long after, a CAB sniper kills Jerry, so Wednesday immediately flees his apartment, but unfortunately, a CAB agent, Joe, manages to corner Wednesday. He finally shots her dead. In the twins' apartment, someone knocks on their door. Only Saturday, Friday and Thursday are remaining in the apartment. Friday and Thursday immediately hide, and Saturday opens the door, it turns out that the person is Adrian, a CAB agent. Adrian flirts with Saturday, however Saturday doesn't recognize this person. Saturday finally realizes, Adrian has a romantic relationship with one of them. Adrian invites Saturday to go to his apartment. She asks for a time out and goes in to meet with her sisters. Thursday tells Saturday to go with Adrian because Adrian is a CAB agent, so they might get a clue about Monday's whereabouts. Friday also tells Saturday to secretly sync her bracelet with Adrian's to be able to hack into the CAB server. Saturday finally agrees and goes with Adrian to his apartment. At his apartment, Saturday digs information from Adrian. It turns out that Monday was the one who had been seeing Adrian. Then, Saturday secretly syncs her bracelet with Adrian's, as Friday suggested. This allows Friday to get access into CAB's servers. On a video feed, the sisters believe they have found Monday in a holding cell. After Adrian left his apartment, Saturday immediately tells Friday and Thursday, that Monday was the one who had been secretly dating Adrian. At the same time, CAB agents arrive and kill Saturday in front of her sister's eyes. Not long after, Karen's apartment is raided by CAB agents led by Joe. Friday sacrifices herself by blowing up their apartment, to allow Thursday to escape and rescue Monday. Now, only two twins remain, Thursday and Monday, who are still locked up. Adrian hears about the explosion at Karen's apartment, and goes straight to the apartment. There, he meets Thursday who directly confronts him in his car. Thursday assumes that Adrian was the one who had reported Karen. However, Adrian does not know anything about these seven twins. Adrian now realizes that Karen is actually a septuplet, and he claims that Love Monday. He finally agrees to help Thursday to rescue Monday. Adrian sneaks Thursday into CAB headquarters with a body bag. She is brought into the cryosleep room. There, she secretly records a child undergoing cryosleep. Instead of being frozen, the child is incinerated. When it is Thursday's turn, Thursday immediately kicks the officer, and put her in cryosleep. Adrian helps Thursday to get out of the cryosleep room, and they find the cell where Monday is locked up. But it turns out that Tuesday is the one in the cell with one of her eyes removed. Finally, Adrian and Tuesday are assigned to hack a video operator, and show a shocking video about cryosleep at a fundraising event being held by Cayman. Meanwhile, Thursday search for Monday. Finally, Thursday meets Monday in a restroom. Monday looks fine. It turns out that Monday is the one who betrays the sisters. She wants to be the one and only Karen, and reported her twins to Cayman. Monday also sends large sums of money to Cayman's as bribes. Thursday and Monday fight in the restroom, and eventually, Thursday accidentally shoots Monday. Thursday then disguises as Monday at the fundraising event, and Cayman doesn't realize this. Meanwhile, Tuesday and Adrian broadcast Thursday's video footage of the child's incineration, leaving everyone at the event shocked. At that moment, Cayman realizes that Thursday is in disguise. She angrily confronts Thursday, choking her. Monday, who is severely injured, gets out of the toilet, pointing a gun at Thursday. Joe shoots Monday, thinking she intends to kill Cayman, and Adrian kills Joe as revenge. As the crowd flees, Monday reveals to Thursday that she betrayed them because she is pregnant with Adrian's children. Unfortunately, twins. Which means one of her children will be taken away. For the sake of her children, she makes a deal with Cayman. She secretly compromises the knowledge and location of her six sisters in return for her to be free and live her life normally as Karen. Not long after, Monday dies from her wounds. In the end of the story, the one-child policy is abolished, and Cayman faces the death penalty. Thursday, Adrian, and Tuesday are the ones that remains alive. Mondays and Adrian's twins develop in an artificial womb. As the camera dollies out, hundreds of babies are seen crying in one enormous ward, as nursing staff care for them. 
And that's the ending of the movie What Happened to Monday. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.